Good evening, good evening. This is Pastor Byron Graham, Pastor of Lighthouse Christian Center. I want to welcome you to our virtual Bible study. It is Wednesday hump day. And as always, we're excited to share with you the living word of God. Uh, as you know, we worship every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at Fort Dorchester High School, 8500 Patriot Boulevard. We worship in the beautiful auditorium. Fort Dorchester is located in North Charleston off Dorchester Road, right next to the new aquatic center and so we would love for you to join us for in-person worship experience uh, connect with us on uh, multiple platforms whether it is on our youtube channel make sure you subscribe uh, connect with us uh, on our website at lighthousesc.org you can find us on facebook and twitter and so uh, we we try to reach out through every means possible to share with you the living word of god let's go to the lord in prayer as we begin father we bless you we thank you for this time uh, we give this time over to you. We pray that lives will be changed. Uh, people's lives will will be uh, something that they've they've never experienced before. That they'll become everything you've called them to be. We we bless you for this time. Where we can get into your word and learn more about you. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, who is the real teacher, and He's here to help us to understand your word. And God, we boldly declare that we won't just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. Touch, heal, deliver, and set free. That is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So uh, this Sunday, again, we're here at 1030 a.m. at Lighthouse Christian Center. It is the last Sunday of the month. Hey, feel free to dress down if you want to, and uh, we're going to have an awesome time of praise and worship. All right, that being said, let's get into a brief time of, of worship here and then we'll come back and get into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. I don't know what you, but I'm expecting great things of our God. I'm expecting God to do awesome, wonderful, and amazing things. I'm going to go and serve a great God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. We're expecting today. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great days. I'm expecting great days. Great days. Oh, yes. I will. Oh, let's sing together again. Let's say, I'm expecting something. I'm expecting great days. Oh, yes. I'm expecting great days. I'm expecting great days, great days. In my life, you're a great day. In my home, you're a great day. Come on, in my life, say that. 
All right, we're expecting great things. We love it. We love it. Awesome praise and worship team. I'm a little biased, so <laughs> we thank God for uh, an amazing service that we had this past week. All right, so as you know, we've been talking about the subject of grace. I want to take a bit of a detour. I want to talk about a subject that is connected to God's grace. And I had a thought this week um, that I felt God put on my heart. And the thought was that we are forgiven. We're forgiven. Now, last week we talked about grace to forgive that um, primarily dealt with how we extend grace and forgiveness to others. But we also need to be reminded of the fact that we are forgiven. In other words, we're forgiven by God. So I want to talk about that today. Again, we are forgiven. So I want to see if we can, um, you know how, how, how we roll with, with technology. We're going to see if we can <laughs> let you see a verse here. And I think uh, many of you know and uh, have uh, maybe come to memorize, it's a, a powerful scripture about forgiveness. And it's in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John, the first chapter, verse number 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he, meaning God, is faithful and just or righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all in righteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. So we are forgiven. I have a quote here by Oswald Chambers. Um, I, I heard about him when I was in college. I read a lot of, uh, I wrote a lot of books and um, great material on uh, grace and, and, and our relationship with God in general. And he mentioned something about forgiveness. He said, forgiveness is the divine miracle of grace. I love that first clause because, you know, we've been talking about the grace of God and, and 
forgiveness is an element of God's grace. So it says, or he says, forgiveness is a divine miracle, a divine miracle of grace. It costs God the cross of Jesus Christ before he can forgive sin and remain a holy God. Once, uh, when once you realize that all it costs God to forgive you, you will be held as a vice constrained by the love of God. I love that. You know, it was a, it was a, a great price God paid for us so we could be forgiven. And it is absolutely a miracle of God's grace. Let me give you a definition of grace uh, or forgiveness, I should say. Forgiveness is God's promise not to count our sins against us. Again, it is God's promise not to count our sins against us. And in the passage that we just read, the Apostle John, he talks about how we've been forgiven by God. And he talks about and discusses uh, what being forgiven looks like in the life of a child of God. We are forgiven. And so we see in this passage here that um, in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9, the Bible says, if we confess our sins before God, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we see primarily that we are forgiven by confessing our sins to God. Let me say that again. We are forgiven by confessing our sins to God. That's how we are forgiven. And so we understand that forgiveness is a part, a major element of the gospel. Uh, it is an extension of God's grace. The Bible says in 1 John first one, uh, chapter 1, verse 9, it says we confess our sins before God. So we understand that confession is, is critical for us to receive this forgiveness. You know, it's been said that uh, forgiveness, or I should say confession, is good for the soul. Uh, confession is good for the soul. And I found in church today, we talk, and there's nothing wrong with it in a sense. <laughs> we talk more about confession in terms of a positive confession, you know, saying what God says about you, speaking God's word over your life, that definitely has value. We don't talk or you don't hear a whole lot in church today about confessing in the sense of confessing your sins. Yeah, the Bible says that uh, we're forgiven by confessing our sins to God. This is part of how we receive that grace. This is part of how we're reminded that God isn't holding our sins against us. You know, uh, God pardons us, if you will. And so we need to engage in this kind of confession. Now, the Bible says in this verse, if we confess our sins, that means it is a choice. So that means God won't make you confess. And some believers choose not to confess. So if we're going to receive this forgiveness, forgiveness, and if we are going to realize that we've been forgiven by God, we have to engage in confession. I thought about a verse in Proverbs chapter uh, 28, verse 13, where the Bible says, he who covers he who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. You can argue that that deals with God's grace. And so God gives grace. God gives mercy. He's compassionate for those who don't hide their sins. All right. Now, now we're preaching. <laughs> now we're getting into some things because the Bible says that we need to confess. And so the Bible says if we're going to be forgiven by God, we need to engage in confession. Again, the Bible says whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. And so that's one critical key to uh, understanding that we are forgiven. Now, in addition, the Bible says in verse number nine, it says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So number one, we understand we're forgiven by confessing our sins to God. Now, what does this look like? Again, if I if I can just pause here for a second, we need to be transparent, okay? We need to be transparent. If there's anything in our life that God identifies that is contrary to his will, we need to be bold enough and show enough humility to confess it unto God, okay? That's how we receive forgiveness. Now, I felt pausing here a little bit because, you know, again, I'm reiterating, this isn't a part of the kingdom culture right now. <laughs> and this isn't the culture of the world today. It's, it's, you know, we try to hide, we try to get over, we, we you, know, you know, do what you have to do, just don't get caught. You know, sometimes we tell our children things like that. 
and um, we we become very secretive. Uh, we're we're not transparent, and you know even when you talk about you know the legal system and you know it's it's, it's all about you know making an argument whether you're guilty or not, just getting off. And and you know listen, no one wants to be held behind bars. No one wants to do time. But the problem with that is you know it it starts to impact how we think, how we live our lives. It, it starts to have a subtle effect on you know just the way we, we we move and govern ourselves and so when we bring it over into our relationship with god there's not a sense of transparency we see it in marriages we see it on the job as well it impacts everything we do and so and again like i said in in church in the body of christ i i would argue that people believers today we we hardly ever uh especially in charismatic circles full gospel circles um you know pentecostal uh, you know, uh, word churches, as we call it today, um, you don't hear a low lot about confession in the sense of confessing sins or faults. You just, we just don't hear that in church anymore. Again, most, most of the discussion is about making positive confessions of faith, which does have value. But the problem with that is the Bible says in that verse we quoted in Proverbs, it says part of our prosperity, part of us enjoying a great life, part of us enjoying the very presence of God, enjoying God's best, his peace, his joy, his love, experiencing this forgiveness, his grace, um, it involves us, you know, confessing our sins before God. And the Bible says it absolutely will cause us to prosper. And so part of me embracing the word of God is not just, you know, speaking the God's word, you know, over our lives. We, not, we, we need to do that. It's not just, you know, you know, understanding that the word is a sword. Yes, it is an offensive weapon against the enemy. But when it comes to my private life, when it comes to my personal life, when it comes to just me and God, I, I need to be transparent. This is how I uh, realize what John the apostle is saying in this verse. I need to confess my sins to God, okay? Yes, we've been forgiven, but there's a, we've been forgiven, but there's something we have to do on our end. And so that's why I wanted to point this out he made it clear. He said, if we confess, that is a choice. Believers don't always do that, but we should. And he says, when we confess, the Bible says he is more than, I'll add, he's faithful and just to forgive us. So yes, we're forgiven. When we confess our sins, we can experience that. We realize that. Number two, we are forgiven because we serve a forgiving God. That's something to shout about, okay? Because people oftentimes aren't like that. People will fall out on you very quickly. They'll go south on you very quickly. Thank God he's not like that. He is a forgiving God. He won't cancel us out. He won't give up on us. He's merciful. He's compassionate. He's long-suffering. Uh, the Bible says he loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us, by the way, unconditionally. And so what he makes abundantly clear in this verse is that we serve a forgiving God. He's faithful and just. That means righteous to forgive us of our sins. Um, I'm reminded of the verse in Psalm 103, verse 12. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That sounds like a forgiving God. Jesus proved this point, by the way. The sacrifice he made is evidence that we serve a forgiving God. We were enemies of the cross. Sin came into this world. We were born in sin, shapen in iniquity. Yet the Bible says God still sent his son. We did not deserve it. Hey, that's grace. <laughs> Undeserved favor. And he sent Jesus in spite of what we did. And so that is proof that God forgave us. That is proof that we are forgiven, that God isn't holding our trespasses, our sins, our faults against us in spite of what we did wrong. And again, many of us, you know, uh, you know, we were born saved, obviously, but the Bible says God still sent forth his son for us. And so you can tell God wasn't holding things against us. He wasn't holding a grudge. He wasn't bitter. He sent his only begotten son to die for us. You, you see it in a lot of patriarchs of old as well. You know, again, we, we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago that the people who God used uh, were not perfect. They had shortcomings, they had faults. I mean, God, I remember a pastor told me, you know, if God would wait until we 
were perfect, none of us would be used by God <laughs> because they aren't perfect people. We, they just, we don't exist. And so, um, you know, the, the awesome thing and the interesting thing about the Bible is it tells the, the, the whole story. I mean, it doesn't just talk about, you know, the good things of these patriarchs. It, it also documents their mistakes as well. Abraham made mistakes. Moses made mistakes. You do know Moses was a murderer, okay? Um, God did not hold that against him. Uh, Daniel, you know, uh, you, 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 look, you go down the line, you know, um, we, we, we've been referencing the Apostle Paul a whole lot because the more I dive into his life, it just, it's, it's more interesting. And you, you really get a, a great idea of God's grace by looking at him. I mean, this guy, he, he was a murderer. I mean, he, he did everything possible to um, destroy the gospel message, did everything. And, and, and God, by his grace, said, I'm not even holding that against you. Man, if that was a person, that was <laughs> that was one of us. We would say, "No, you can never be used. You can never be used." I mean, look at your history, look at your past record, you know, your your, your track record, if you uh, uh, your track record. You know, even some of the the apostles and the original twelve disciples, they they didn't really want to have anything to do with the apostle Paul. I mean, they they had sometimes contentious relationship. They they remembered, you know, what he was like prior to his conversion, and so you know there was a you know there was a, an uneasiness uh, when they were around him. But uh, God said, no, you're you're a, a prime candidate for my grace. God is a forgiving God. He forgave the apostle Paul um, when a lot of people would not have given him a second chance. They would not have forgiven him. And, and that's why God is not man. He, he has a, a, a big heart. He, he, he's a, it's a God of love. And he is a forgiving God. Absolutely. You see that all throughout scripture. My God. I mean, you look in the hall of fame, the heroes of faith. Some would say the hall of faith, Hebrews chapter 11. You got a harlot in there, all right? A harlot, woman of the night, prostitute, as we would say today. Um, she's in the lineage of Jesus too. You know, God used her to, to hide the Israeli spies, and God used her to help bring deliverance to the Hebrews. God has always been seen in scripture as a forgiving God, even under the old Testament under the old covenant, but Jesus, he, he solidifies this in the new covenant as he came, shed his precious blood, became the sacrifice for people, us, me, <laughs> who did not deserve it. We see how loving, how compassionate, and how forgiving God is. That's why Jesus was teaching the disciples, you know, your know, master, how often do we forgive someone, you know, seven times? No, he says, how about 70 times? And one day, I mean, over and over again, you you forgive. You, you don't let people use you. You don't let people take advantage of you. But you you forgive them. You don't hold on to any bitterness, any grudges, any, bit, any kind of resentment. So the Bible says that he, we, he is a, a forgiving God. And he says that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. I'm also reminded, before I forget, that God told Israel, you know, unfaithful, up and down Israel. He said, I'm married to a backslider. So I'm married to you. How could he say that? He's a forgiving God. Oh, yes, he was upset with Israel. You know, he, he was angry. You know, there were consequences to their actions. Okay. Um, just because God is a forgiving God, that does not mean there won't be consequences. He will love you through those consequences and he won't hold it against you. You know, he won't cancel his plan for your life. You know, he, he won't, he'll still give you a bright future and a, and a hope moving forward um but he absolutely won't hold our your my sins against me that's really in a nutshell the plan of salvation okay and so we see we are forgiven number one uh we're forgiving by confessing our sins to god again we can't prosper if we don't confess i need to engage in positive confessions or or speaking God's word over my life, over my family, my finances. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But, but again, we don't talk about this. I need to engage in confession. You know, I believe in, in Catholicism. They, there's a lot of value. You know, we don't do this in different religions, but it's amazing the piece, the, the weight that gets lifted off of people when they, they quote unquote go to confession. You know, sometimes they tell it to a priest, but hey, we have a great high priest we can go to at any time. We can confess things to God and what we tell him, our secrets, our shortcomings, they're safe with him. You know, you tell a man or a person, you never know. Okay, but God, 
he'll he'll keep that private he'll you can be vulnerable to him we can confess and then we can receive that forgiveness we said we are forgiven because we serve a forgiving god and we are forgiven because the bible says we've been cleansed from all unrighteousness through the sacrifice of jesus and as we do this moving forward god cleanses us how many of you know that sin leaves a stain? Sin separates us from God. Yet the Bible says we are forgiven because he cleanses us. In the Old Testament, the priests had to sacrifice lambs, bulls, goats uh, to atone for their sins. They absolutely could not come into the presence of God with sin. Some would fall dead, especially when you go closer to the presence of God, into the holies of holies. You could not come in without making atonement. The good news is Jesus that spotless lamb made atonement for us so now when we confess our sins when we when we come to god we can receive forgiveness and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness it, it's like we never sinned at all it's, it's like he washes us white as snow you know uh the, the bible says you know we're, we're clean you know and 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 when you think about this this uh uh phrase and, and this idea that he, he lists here in this passage, you know, you speak about, you think about the blood of Jesus and, you know, how it washes us white as snow. You think about how in the New Testament, uh, the Bible says we're free from condemnation. I, I believe that's part of the cleansing process. What is condemnation? That is a sh very strong disapproval. So that means when I sin, if I confess it to God, the fact that we are forgiven, God cleanses me and now I'm still approved by God. How does that happen? Through his precious blood. How does that happen? By his grace. Okay, even if I miss it in sin, and we all do. The Bible says that we are forgiven. And so he removes the stain of sin. He removes the guilt, the shame. He removes it. And he says, son, daughter, I still approve of you. You are still my child. It's like you never sinned. It, it, we're, we're just like the priests who make atonement and we and 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 we essentially go in spotless, you know, free from wrongdoing. That's what happens when we go to God and confess. And that's what happens when we we embrace the concept that hey, we've been forgiven by God. That's 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 the perfect definition of God's grace, that we've been forgiven, his love, his mercy, and his compassion. And so the Bible says that we confess our sins. God is faithful, more than willing and able to forgive us of our sins. We're forgiven, and he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are made to be in right standing with God. And let me tell you what, um, sometimes um, the mistakes we make can be hard to deal with. One of the things I failed to mention is, you know, we, we talked about um, that we serve a forgiving God. That is absolutely true. And oftentimes believers don't struggle with that. But you know what we do struggle with? Forgiving ourselves. <laughs> that's the problem. God will forgive us. You know, um, I mean, that's that's clear in scripture. He's a God of second, third, and fourth chances. You see it with all the patriarchs who made all kinds of mistakes. Moses, you know, uh, David, Paul, you know, Peter. You know, God will forgive you. Um, what we struggle with is sometimes we don't forgive ourselves. And so we have to and, and, and wrap ourselves around, wrap ourselves in God's love. It, it's kind of like the quote we mentioned earlier is that he said, forgiveness is the, the divine miracle of grace. It costs God the cross of Jesus Christ before he can forgive sin and remain a holy God. When once you realize all that it costs God to forgive you, you will be held as in a vice constrained by the love of God. Like when you realize the price that was paid just so we could be forgiven. So you, you will be constrained in God's love. Man, it, 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 it gives you a conviction and, and a re realization of the power of God's love. That's why Paul says nothing will separate me from the love of God. Yes, I've made mistakes. Yes, I've dropped the ball. I, I've, I've sinned and fallen short of God's glory, but we've been forgiven. We've been forgiven. And he cleanses me from all unrighteousness. He cleanses me from all kinds of condemnation. God still loves me. I'm still his child. He still approves of me. In fact, God still likes me. <laughs> and, and that's just the, uh, that's, that's the power of forgiveness. That's the power of God's grace as well. And so we have to embrace this idea that, man, you know, we, we serve a God of grace. 
because of that, I'm forgiven by God. Yes, I made mistakes. Yes, sometimes people will try to throw it in your face. The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Man, we have to get a revelation of the love and the grace of God. And then we realize, hey, I've been forgiven. God is not holding my transgressions, my faults, my sins, my shortcomings. He's not holding it against me. You know, we, we mentioned, and we'll wrap it up um, with the prodigal son. And, and just the response of his father was amazing. I think it just gives you a snapshot of what God is like. And the son confessed like we're supposed to. <laughs> he admitted that he was wrong. He was transparent. He was open. He was honest. He was honest. And the father said, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I'm just glad that you're home. And I think that's what God says. I'm just glad that you came back to me. I, I'm just glad that 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 you still want to be in a relationship with me. Don't 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 worry about what you did wrong. Okay. I've cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just glad that you're back. Hey, I'm just glad you're back in church. I'm just glad you came back and spent time with me in prayer. I'm just glad you're starting to get back in your word again. I'm, I'm just I'm just glad that you're 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 praying again. Okay. You're doing the things you used to do in your relationship with me. And you've been forgiven. And that's what separates God, Jesus Christ, from any other God, any other deity. That was that spotless lamb. Okay? If just man, if justice had his way, we all be going to hell. But God, who's rich in mercy, by his grace, by his great grace, he came and saved us and he said, "Son, daughter, you are forgiven." And that that's that's the grace of God. You know, I say this and we we will close. I, I um we experience grace, you know, in our everyday lives, you know, you know, pardon people just, you know, tell us don't worry about things. I remember um uh, not too long ago. All right, here I go. I was uh taking my girls to school. We live right right now, we live right around the corner from um uh, their school. We almost we almost can walk or ride bike to school. It's it's, it's that close. And I'm taking them to um, school, driving them in the morning. And, you know, I was like, hey, buckle up. And, and, and you know, was right around the corner and, and they didn't buckle up. And, and I honestly, I can't put it on them because I didn't enforce it at the time. And I didn't make sure. I didn't wait till I heard that click sound. And um, we were going to school. Again, we lived right on the corner. And I saw a cop. I was like, oh, I said, I said girls, I said, girls, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. And it was too late. <laughs> It was too late. Uh, we got pulled over. I was like, oh, man. And I, I mean, what can I say? I was wrong. I was guilty. I can't, I can't do that. You, I mean, accidents happen. And this is what the officer expresses. This is something that's, you know, close to my heart because I have small girls as well. I said, no, I get it, man. You're right. And, you know, even though I said, we do live right on the corner, but despite that, and I think he could have given me, given me um, like a $300 ticket. He said, what I'm going to do is this. I said, listen, I'm just going to downgrade it. I'm going to, um, you know, just write it and, and you have to pay. I said, now you got to pay a little fine. I think maybe 50, 60 bucks, 30, 56 bucks. And he said, I got to just, you know, write you something. I said, no. I said, dude, I said, you don't have to explain. I said, I get it. Thank you. <laughs> I said, thank you. I said, I appreciate it. Because I actually deserved by the law, by the letter of the law, I was supposed to get maybe like a $350 ticket. Oh, but he showed me grace. <laughs> I was happy about it. And here's the thing. You know, you hear so many things about the police and, and whatnot. Some may be warranted, some not. But I I, I was um, I was very happy how how professional he was. And um, I mean, he, he could have been, for lack of a better word, I mean, he could have been a jerk about it. And he wouldn't have been a jerk if he enforced the rule. Let me, let me rephrase that. He could have really just threw the book at me and being angry and yelling and screaming. And he was calm. He was professional. He was, um, and, he, and he helped me out. And um, I, I was very impressed on how he conducted himself. I almost wanted to call a supervisor and say, hey, man, you got a guy here. He really, you know, not that he just helped me out, but he, he just, he, um, real good guy. He just seemed like a real good guy, very professional, didn't feel threatened at all. You know, my girls, they were crying in the back because they had never been pulled over. <laughs> so they didn't know what to expect. <laughs> I said, calm down. But um, I was happy. I was so happy that he um, he showed me some grace and he saved me a lot of money. So much so that I almost wanted to call a supervisor, to, you know, just say, hey, guys, he, he was great. You know, but the thing is, you know, God does that for us every single day. 
<laughs> every single day. Every day he gives us grace. Every day he helps us out. Every day we don't get what we deserve oftentimes, you know? I was so impressed. I mean, you see someone in the flesh and, and man, it just like he made my week. <laughs> but God does that for us every single day. You know, the penalty of our sin. So you don't have to pay the price. I've already paid the price. You know, don't let this sin drag you down. Listen, let's just move past it. Don't worry about it. Like, really? You're like, really? It's just kind of like I was when I got pulled over. I was like, really? You're going to do it for me? I was like, thank you. Thank you. He's trying to explain. I said, no, you don't have to explain. Like, I, I appreciate it. I get it. <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll take this. I will gladly take this smaller fine. And, and, and God does that for us all the time. Man, who wouldn't serve a God like that? He is, he is a God of grace. And we have to be reminded of this. If, if I was impressed by this cup, I ought to be even more impressed and, uh, by what God did through Christ. If, if I was overjoyed by what this officer did for me on that one time, I should be so celebratory and overjoyed and full of joy and, and uh, passionate about God because he does this all the time. You know, he says his mercies are new every single morning. <laughs> every, not every leap year. <laughs> not every decade. Not, not every year. Not even every month. He said, My God. Mm. every single morning, every single morning, he gives us brand new mercies. He said, you know, just don't worry about it. Every single morning. Now, we got to do our part. Now, we got to do our part. He said, we got to confess. You know, you can have your own confessional booth <laughs> at home in your prayer closet. He said, we got to confess. He said, don't hide your sins. Don't hide your sin. He who covers his sins will not prosper. Okay? Think about Ananias and Sapphira. They could have gotten grace. They tried to cover it. He said, don't hide your sin. Be honest. Be transparent. Like I was with the cop. I said, no, you got me. I'm guilty. <laughs> And he said, every single morning, I'll give you new grace. Every single morning, I'll give you new mercy. Every single morning, I will remind you, hey, that you have been forgiven. Every single morning, I'm going to remind you that I'm not holding your sins against you. All right? Hey, we've been forgiven. And, and that is, that is a, a manifestation of the grace of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We thank you for reminding us that we've been forgiven. You're not holding things against us. And we thank you for that. We're grateful. We're so grateful that you have wiped away our sin. We, we're so grateful that Jesus paid the penalty for our transgressions. And now we can come into a relationship with you every single day. We give you praise. We give you the honor. And we give you all of the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. Those of you who are on Zoom, those on Facebook, hey, or, and, and YouTube as well. God bless you. Hey, comment, like the post. Hey, say something nice. Let us know you're there. Share it with your friends. Uh, we would be uh, appreciative of that. And of course, we're at Fort Dorchester High School, 10 a.m. Sunday morning, hey, 10 a.m. sharp. Like we get started right at 10 a.m. And, you know, keep in mind now this around 10 30 ish you know we, we shut those doors we have security protocol so uh come in nice and early on time and, and we'll love to worship with you god bless you y'all have a blessed rest of the week and we will see you again <laughs>